Mark, with all due respect to the likes of Shortwoods and your, your Brimscombs today, Bristol Rovers is more of a sort of barometer to what you're going to face, isn't it? Yeah, I think we're trying to get the level of games you know, up as we go along. So, you know, we started off with a couple of local teams, which is important, and get the players' legs going. Tough game up Western Superman the other night. They were very, very good. And um, gives a real examination. And today will be another step up again. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. As you said, Bristol Rovers are a step up. They've just landed from Portugal, where, where you're off to on, on Sunday. Is that going to affect them at all, do you think? I'm not, so, I'm not sure. It's like Monday for us. We trained uh, Tuesday night. Like We trained really, really hard on the Monday. With the Tuesday night in mind, we wanted the players to go in tired and if they could handle it mentally. And, and that's what pre-season is all about. And I'm sure Bristol Rovers will, will be in the same state of mind, but I'm not sure it'll affect too much on the pitch. No. With all that in mind then, um, what's your starting eleven today? And are you planning to sort of mix things up? Yeah, I think we're starting to give players a bit more game time. But we have obviously a, a, a trip tomorrow, early start. You know, We have to make sure that we don't put their fitness at risk. Uh, we have you know, a training session when we get there tomorrow, so we, we need to make sure that we're all fit for the training sessions. It's, it's important that we use that time in Portugal. Uh, so, you know, the team to start will be Brad Collins in goal. It'll be a back three of Jack Fitzwater, Lee Collins and Manny Monfe. Two wing backs will be Dale Bennett, Scott Laird. Two deeper midfield players of Leah Noble and Charlie Cooper. Reese Brown, just in behind Christian Doidge and Luke James. Have you, at this stage of uh, pre-season, got your starting eleven in mind for the Barnet game, or are people still putting their hands up? I think you could probably say there's five or six that are looking like they'd they'd probably start. You know, um, but after that, you know, we're still a couple of players short, which we're working incredibly hard at the moment to, to get in. It's really difficult because I mean, once you come into the league, you realise that there's wheels within wheels, and it moves in different ways, and you have to be in with certain agents to get certain deals done, it's difficult. So we're finding that, um, but we're confident of adding to the squad in the next couple of days. Yeah, I know you said to me when we spoke before, you were hoping to get your squad done and dusted bef uh, on the plane to Portugal. I guess that's not the case at the no, moment. No, we could, we could have a, late, a couple of late arrivals that join us um, either at the airport or, or later in the day tomorrow. It's that, it's that tight. So, but what I'm not gonna do is put the, put the the health of the club at risk by doing silly deals. You know, if you look at if you look at Lincoln in the last few weeks, the, the players players paying vast sums of money. Michael Boswick, I inquired about at the start of pre season, and and the Peterborough director of football laughed at me. He said, "You'll never get him." So that that tells its own story. So we're in a big league now, paying big big money. We're no longer the big fish, but that doesn't always guarantee success. We're still going to be competitive. And the players we bring in have to be right for our change room and right for our football club. Yeah, and the window is running till the end of August, so time is running out, but there is still time. Yeah, there's still time. There's plenty of time. So we're comfortable in what we're doing. We're, like I said, we're not going to rush into it and, and get the wrong one for the sake of a day or two. Yeah. Finally, I've just got to ask you the question about Drissa again. Any more news on Drissa back at home with his family in France? Yeah, I spoke to Drissa yesterday. He called me and, and said that he was trying to have had the funeral. They're trying to, he's trying to sort out his young, his young brothers and sisters that are really young and there's no one else to take care of them. So, so they're relying on him. So we're trying to do all we can. Just is going to come back early next week and start his training programme again. Um, he's going to be a couple of weeks behind, but as long as we get him back, that's the main thing. OK, smashing. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Cheers.